Okay, our next speaker is Laura Fabri. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. My name is Laura Fabris, and I'm Italian. My education, uh, let me see. So, oh, so I'll give you a little bit of background about my education and my employment history. I earned my master, uh, joined a uh, bachelor and master's degree in Italy at the University of Padova. Padova is the northeast of Italy, very close to Venice, and we're very happy and proud to say that we are the second oldest university in the world that was founded in 1222. And also we are proud to be the, the, the university that had the first woman earning a master's degree in the history. It was in 1678 and it was a logic degree. As a master's student, uh, I studied photosynthesis, about which we've been hearing about a little bit already. I was studying um, models, synthetic models of uh, reaction centers, and I was studying uh, by electron spin resonance how uh, charged uh, states, positively and negatively charged states, are formed and recombined, and what are the timelines on which these events happen. And studying the electron transfer during my math, uh, by, during my, the development of uh, my master's thesis, got me really interested into the electron transfer. Uh, but, you know, some events happened in life and there were no enough funding, so my advisor back then said it, that she couldn't keep me there, so I decided, okay, I don't want to study anymore, I don't want to go into academia anymore, I'll just join a company I work as a lab manager. But that was not challenging enough, it was not enough, you know, it was not pushing me enough. So I decided to go back, to go back to my first love, that was electron transfer. So I studied electron, studied, I joined a group that was studying electrochemically induced electron transfer. I'm a physical chemist as background and the, the group I joined was an electrochemistry group. And so I, was, I started studying electrochemistry in, uh, of systems uh, and in particular electron transference systems. And these systems were nanoparticles. These nanoparticles were gold nanoparticles with sizes between one and two nanometers. And these nanoparticles are very interesting and are different from the colloids or nanoparticles around 10, 20, 50 nanometers that we are used to see because they behave like molecules. If you, if you measure the, an absorption spectrum of this molecule, or if you measure the energy levels, they're not a continuum. They have isolated and very resolved energy levels. And this was very interesting, interesting to me because we could see uh, very special behaviors uh, and very special events um, happening into these systems. But I was also interested into big, bigger nanoparticles. So I started learning more about all these systems that are between, that are with sizes comprised between one and a hundred nanometers. And that got me into developing my passion for these nanoparticulate systems. Um, after uh, earning my PhD in 2006, I moved to California, and, then, and I have to say something about choices of places. I didn't choose UC Santa Barbara because the campus was on the beach, although that was a plus, but because uh, the Department of Material Science and Chemistry are very good departments, and I was very happy to work into that university, and I actually had the opportunity to learn a lot there. Um, I joined the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, and I was working specifically on the development of biosensors uh, using surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy. Raman spectroscopy is a technique that, um, uh, that uh, uh, discriminates among particles, among, um, among molecules, among analytes by studying the vibrations of this bond, of the bonds that constitute the molecules. However, is, uh, is a technique that doesn't allow us to detect uh, analyzing small concentrations because of low cross-sections of, of this particular phenomenon. But if we include nanoparticles in, this, in, uh, in, in the picture and we are able to deposit the molecule that we're looking for in close proximity to the surface of the, of the metallic, uh, metallic nanoparticle, then we can see enhancements in the, in the signal that can go up to 14 orders of magnitude. So we use this technique uh, for the development of these, uh, these biosensors. In one case, uh, we developed biosensors for DNA, and uh, in, this, in, this bottom, in this bottom picture here, 
we, we use this, uh, just a very simple glass slide and that was printed with peptidinoclic acid. Now peptidinoclic acids are uh, new, uh, neutral alternatives to DNA, but they have the same hybridization pro properties. And so uh, upon binding, uh, the charge becomes uh, negative with the DNA and the nanoparticles, if they're positively charged, can bind on the substrate and create hot spots that are depicted here in red, where the enhancement of the signal is very, very intense. And this type of technique enabled us to obtain similar results to what is possible to obtain to the, the, the uh, current and uh, commercially, commercially available um, are microarray techniques that are used for the detection of DNA. And later on, I developed a similar system uh, that was featured in the cover of advanced functional material for the detection of proteins. This method was very, very efficient into detecting proteins down to a picomolar level of, of, of analyte protein, and also was very useful to detect, this, to detect the single protein we were looking for, the single target, among a pool of very different proteins. And so if you think about using this type of sensors in complex environments, such as the whole blood or plasma, this could be a, a very useful method to obtaining this. Um, one thing I have to say is that all my experiences in both educational and work experiences have may appear very diversified and may appear not to have um, a line. I have not been the typical uh, you know, perceived scientist that has always followed a major topic. I, I went from photosynthesis to nanoparticles to biosensors, and it's, it might look like that I, don't, I didn't know what I was doing, but actually that was really planned. I was, it was for a choice that I decided to move around that way because I started with electron transfer in photosynthesis, and then I took that and I moved it as my background knowledge into the following step for my PhD. And then I acquired knowledge into nanoparticles and I used this nanoparticle knowledge to go ahead and go in, forward into my postdoctoral studies. And, this, and, and in analogy to this, all my past experiences uh, are now put uh, all together into my projects that I'm going to develop here at Rutgers. And I have to say that Rutgers is being a very nice environment and I'm very happy to be here. And I'm actually much happier than I thought I would be. And so I think it's in a good way. I knew I would be happy, but it's really being much better than I thought. And, and this is due to all the nice scientists, engineers, all the collaborators, all the people that are around from the students to the other faculty members. Um, so the, the base of my research will always be nanoparticles. I will start studying nanoparticles, metal nanoparticles, gold and silver, because I have much more knowledge on them. I want to start from somewhere where I'm comfortable with. And then I'll move on with polymer nanoparticles eventually, probably quantum dots, but right now I want to focus on these systems. And one of the things I want to do, I want to develop core shell systems and spherical nanoparticles, rods, and also different shapes like cubes and stars. Because if you think about um, enhanced techniques, like it is surface enhanced from uh, spectroscopy, then we want to create points, um, create systems that have very sharp edges. Because in these sharp edges is, is there that the enhancement of the signals takes place. And also, all the plasmonics, all the plasmonics and all the uh, effects I'm looking for are taking place into these areas. So on one side, I want to develop, um, I want to study nanoparticle assembly in one, two, and three dimensions that takes uh, place by, by carefully tailoring the, mm, you know, the mixing of small molecules, polymers, and biopolymers and studying the plasmonic properties and the electron transfer properties on these systems. And I also want to utilize nanoparticles as, as a base tool for bio-nanotechnology. Nanopar metal nanoparticles are very easy to functionalize and are very stable. And so my plan is to functionalize them with proteins, peptides, amino acids, antibodies, polyethylene glycol, which is a polymer that stabilizes and makes the nanoparticles and makes them very biocompatible. And 
And I want also to add uh, Raman or Flo Flo Raman tags specifically to make them um, uh, useful for combined imaging and drug delivery system. Uh, so some, these are some of my, the references, and as I said, um, I also always try to mix uh, the knowledge and, uh, and the backgrounds in my, in my education. And in the, the same way, I would like to collaborate with uh, other faculties, other, group, other groups in different backgrounds. We're interested into modeling, we're interested into application in devices, but also into cell biology. So I'm really happy to collaborate and to learn from all of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>